down, the coronavirus pandemic has impacted the movie industry in no small measure, halting film production and closing cinemas around the world, especially in an economic economy such as Nigeria. And while normalcy seems to be returning, countries are experiencing the second wave of the pandemic. Now the virus is creating uncertainty, and the biggest short-term risk seems to be consumers dwindling confidence in physical venues. Now, movie director Tosi Igor and actress Idea Eisen join us to discuss the trend and the new blockbuster movie Neka, The Pretty Serpent. Well, just before we speak to Idea and Tosi, let's see a snippet from the movie. Take a look. Revenge. They invaded my kid. Your mother was one of us. That makes you one of us. All right, glad to have you, uh, join us on New Stadia Ice. Yeah. Uh, let's start with talking about this is your first, if I'm correct, this is your first foray into the movie industry. I, I read about how you were called and got auditioned for the role. Let's start with that. What was it like? Definitely um, something that was very unbelievable. Um, I got a call at 2 a.m. in the morning um, about an interview. Hello, dear. Hi, hello. Okay, good. Well, Happy New Year first. Uh, I, I don't know whether you had my question. Okay, well, um, uh, I got a call at 2 a.m. one morning uh, basically um, asking that I come in for an audition to read for NECA. And I was like, what NECA? And they were like, the Prissy Serpents. And I said, that's a movie. I don't act. And they were like, yeah, we just want to see something. We want you to come in and read for it. So I think from that phone call till today, I still can't believe it's happened and we filmed it and all of that. But after that first audition, I was asked to send in some videos. I was asked to come in for another audition. I was asked to come in for another audition. Um, and then I got a call one day that I had gotten the role and I I couldn't believe it. I, I thought I was being pranked or something. Um, but for months after that, uh, I was given Igbo classes. I was coached in acting. I was learning how to swim on the side, um, learning how to fight um, and different things. So a lot actually went into um, getting me ready to be NECA. Yeah, I mean, Idia, congratulations. It sounds like a steep learning curve for you, which you took under your, it took in your stride. But I'm um, just out of interest. I'm assuming you watched the first movie. And if you did, what was it about the movie that you identified with that you feel was begging to be retold? Well, first of all, I think um, as, as, as different generations come, you want to be able to tell stories, but you want the stories to still be relatable to, you know, the new um, generation. And I think it was important that many of those Nollywood classics uh, were brought back, just like they've done with Living in Bondage and like they've done with Rattlesnake. But for um, NECA... You know, everybody loved Mrs. Indidiobi, Honorable Indidiobi, and I think the role kind of changed her life. I don't think she can walk on the streets. I mean, I even traveled with her to film in South Africa, and she can't go anywhere without people saying, wait, you're Neka the Pretty Serpent. So it was something that she told me greatly impacted her, and I was excited to be able to interpret that role in my own way. So it was an opportunity I couldn't say no to. Um, I also think it was important because... Um, of course, it would be the first time that they're using someone who's darker skinned. And I wanted that to be um, an important message that, you know, beauty comes in all shapes. OK, that's interesting. Uh, um, I just want to ask again, maybe what are some of the themes the movie speaks of that you feel you, you struck a chord with you? So is it about revenge? What is it? I haven't watched it now, but my appetite has already been wet. So what are the themes about the movie that struck you particularly and, and struck a chord with you? I moved me because I could relate to this girl who had lost her importance in six um, and then she was also just trying to find a purpose. She was searching for herself. And I think when I read the script, that was the same that I was in my life. So I was like, okay, let's see um, how this can work. And then when I saw the about like her being deep, kick ass, like this is an opportunity to show neck. This burden that you carry, are you sure it's not too heavy for you? Strong and fierce. But... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, it's interesting you're acting in Nika, the participant. I, I was there. If you watched the first uh, uh, one before you were engaged in this, I was the, the actor, the, the, the character that was killed by Nika, 
that opened <laughs> up a pot of a plate of food and then fire burst out and, oh, I need to and go killed watch that the first particular one then. actor <laughs> then. Uh, it's interesting mm. that you're there now. But what do you make of, uh, how did you relate with the director, uh, both uh, during the, because after the audition, of course, you have a, 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 a training sessions, a, a, what do you call it, rehearsal sessions. So how, what did you make, how did you relate with the director, the cast, you know, before the proper shooting? Um, to be honest, I, I met with the cast like a day or two before I was actually uh, supposed to start filming the movie. And for me, from the beginning, when I was uh, being trained for it, it was just a humbling experience throughout. So everyone I met or encountered, for me, it was like, okay, what do I learn from this person? Like, uh, how can this make my performance in the movie better? Because if, it, if the audience doesn't believe it and if the audience doesn't believe our relationships, then, you know, it won't work. So I think from the beginning, I met the director. He is a very specific person. Tosin Ego knows exactly what he wants to get out of each shot. Um, and it was just a huge learning experience working with him, learning from him, seeing how his mind works. And I have a really good relationship with him, my acting coach, um, the producers, and most of the cast. So, I mean, for me, it was just a learning experience all through. Okay, um, before I go to asking you about uh, COVID and the industry, do you feel you're going to be going forward in terms of your acting now? Um, having had this experience, do you feel this is just the start for you and you're looking forward to doing lots more in that area? I mean, that depends. I mean, if people, uh, people seem to be receiving the movie really well. Um, if you watch the movie and you let me know what you think, I'll know if I should keep acting. <laughs> but I think it's all, <laughs> it's all about how the audience as an actress and supervised, um, if I get more intense roles like this, I'm definitely um, very open to acting more. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was actually wondering, really, really, I was wondering. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, before, before, before COVID, uh, before COVID, I mean, people relax and, you know, uh, act and do whatever. How is it, uh, yeah. how has COVID affected the film industry, the acting? you know, uh, the entire film industry in Hollywood. I mean, you're just getting into it already. But how, how, how has it affected the movie industry? What do you think? So I can only answer from um, the little that I know. I feel like uh, if Tosin was here, he'd be able to speak more to that. But um, from what I know, in terms of just distribution, in terms of the movie in cinemas, and, you know, there are all these restrictions. A lot of people cannot necessarily go um, because they're scared of catching COVID. Um, that's been an issue. We've also seen some other movies that are released directly to platforms like Netflix because they think, you know, if it's in the cinemas, people may not necessarily, or as many people may not be able to go and watch the movie. So there are lots of restrictions in terms of shooting, um, in terms of locations we couldn't get uh, because, you know, places were shut down. In terms of just not being able to reach as many people, as you would like to at this particular point in time. And in terms of a lot of productions just being on hold because, you know, people are scared to take that risk. They don't know what will happen. They don't know if the movies will be um, as successful. But um, I think with Play Network Studios, they're generally risk takers. And I also think that um, the network is buoyant enough and they, they, they have a vision where, you know, they just move. Uh, no matter what happens, they move. And from there, hopefully, the movie also goes on Netflix. So I think... I don't know. I think things worked out in our favor because people still went out to see the movie. Mm. Well, I can only wish you the best uh, yeah. as you continue uh, along this line. Uh, I, Idia Aysia, the best. <laughs>